Hello lovely crafty friends, I'm Sasha and this is Love Builds Up Crafts, the channel where we just appreciate arts and crafts and we experiment with anything glittery, sparkly, shimmery and all that lovely goodness. So if you're that kind of person who can appreciate a bit of sparkle in your life, then stay tuned. So today we've got the Tonic Studios Designer's Choice, which is called Floral Sentiments. And oh my goodness, what a beautiful set. Now guys, I know that Tonic do send me these products as part of their content design team, but my opinions or my views or anything that I share with you is completely my own is not influenced by anything that tonic says to me because they don't pay me that well <laughs> i'm absolutely kidding anyway aren't these envelope just designs just so brilliant i just love this it's autumn we've got some leaves we've got some warm orangey colors you can definitely repurpose these envelopes just give it a bit of a clean so this is how you get your set it's just dyes and it comes in this plastic wallet but you can always use your magnetic sheet to store it so i'm just grabbing a piece of white paper so that we're able to see our dyes and those are all our dies so in total we have about 12 dies i don't know if i counted correctly but i think it's 12 dies so we've got um sentiment emboss like they emboss the sentiment onto your paper and i think that is just so gorgeous so you can have the sentiment embossed directly onto your card or you can emboss it and then cut it out using this banner die there's a banner die there that you can use to cut out your sentiment as you can see the sentiments fit perfectly into that banner die all three of them fit perfectly some are longer some are shorter but they all fit perfectly so that you can cut them out using that banner die which is really neat because you can emboss or have it as a separate sentiment that sentiment I was holding reads thinking of you. Then we've got sent with love and we have have a beautiful day. So those are our three sentiment embossing dies. I guess they're embossing plates. I don't know <laughs> what the right terminology is. And then we've also got these one, two, three, four uh, sort of big floral designs with Three of them have an embedded embedded sentiment in the design, but we've got this big outline die that cuts out the whole shape whether you want it to cut into your paper or you want to cut it out separately that outline die will cut it out for you then we've got this big floral design that comes with this little bit that detaches so you can have that little bit as its own de design its own floral design or you can have it attached and cut it all out as one big shape like i've done there i like this big shape because i think um, it's really intricate and it's just really beautiful but it's absolutely up to you how you use it you can also take that little bit off and then cut it out cut out the shape right and it will cut out that top floral design then you can emboss one of these sentiments because i think they'll fit under there then you can emboss one of these sentiments maybe uh we'll i'll show you some cards and we'll see how i've used it i mean i'm not the best at these things but i do try but anyway there's that little die as well that cuts out that floral shape by itself that teeny see wincy floral shape so you can have that and then there's this die that cuts out thinking of you and uh you can cut it all out or you can cut it into the paper like i've done there if you wanted to cut it all out as a separate shape you'd use that big outline die and you can also add that tinsy wincy die to the bottom of all of these designs then there's that best wishes I like this floral design, I really do. And then there's just to say, I this is my favorite one out of the three. I just like this floral design, the shape and everything. I really like this set because I feel like it's modern. It's not too traditional because uh, I do get, uh, I do have a hard time dealing with traditional things. Um, I, I'd like to think I'm more for modern design and then anyway we've got these two little dinky dies that cut out floral shapes so that's all our dies now let's look at some of the designs that I sent in I've got this 
inlay glitter inlay card because these designs are perfect for inlay but i was not about to spend my day filling all those gaps in so what i did is a glitter inlay instead where i cut out the i used the big floral dye without the dainty bit and then i cut it out four times or focusing that bottom bit towards the middle so that it looks like some best shape in my head that's what i thought <laughs> and then i filled it in with some desert sunset pure sheen glitter which is the orangey bits and some falling snow which is the lighter bits and i used some inca gold cardstock for a bit of the frame and then to cut out that sentiment out of one of the floral dyes with the sentiments this card here is my absolute favorite because i don't use red very often it's a hard color for me to use because i just don't like it but I love this card. So what I did is I used the, I think it's called Candy Scribe, a Candy Scribe craft foil card. And um, I used some white, you know what, if you guys want a tutorial for this card and you are subscribed, then let me know and I might just consider it. <laughs> no i'm joking just let me know in the comments and i'll do a tutorial because i think explaining it doesn't do it justice then finally we have no not finally we also have this craft card uh an acetate card which i really love as well because the acetate just makes it so beautiful i used two layers of acetate and i colored it with my markers at the back and then if you want a tutorial for this card as well let me know in the comments below because i don't know which cards you guys will like so let me know which ones you like and you want to see the tutorial so i also made this coaster uh i repurposed one of the tonic coasters that we got during the birthday week i know we all got loads of those so you can do this project along with me and that's what the tutorial is going to be for today's video we're going to make this little coaster and i just so love this little thing i chose the name jody because you'll see in the video just watch the video and you'll see why i chose the name jody <laughs> all right so let's get started we are about to be drinking a lot of tea because a winter is coming <laughs> so i repurposed one of the tonic coasters not that the tonic design isn't good, it's just that not everyone we know is a tonicaholic and I think this would make a really cool gift. So what I did is I primed it with four layers of a gesso primer in white and you can get this from, I got this from the craft stash. I don't know about brands, I just got the one that I saw and it says there that it adds a light uh, layer with a bit of tooth, with a slight tooth okay so previously i had used uh acrylic paint and that was a mess okay i tell you let me just show you uh this is what came out when i used the <laughs> yeah so i tried this with uh the happy holidays set that should have been released by now <laughs> hopefully it has been or else this is a cheeky sneak peek that you shouldn't be seeing but anyway i coated this with four layers of of uh, acrylic white paint and then it got so thick and then on top of that after i had done my design everything started coming to the surface so you can see some of the pink and then uh i added the glazing uh, the is it glacier anyway it's a tonic glaze i can't remember the name at the moment and then some of the bits went cream and i don't know if that's because of the primer that i used which is acrylic paint so for this one we're going to use mod podge to seal it when we are done we're just going to coat it with the thick layer of mod podge i'm just checking if mine isn't rotten because i did buy this about two years ago <laughs> i know i know but it's such a big jar what can you use much podge for so anyway it's not rotten so we're gonna go ahead and use that so what i wanted to do is use some of these uh die cards as a stencil but not to paint over it to trace over with the pencil and i'm going to use some because i like that floral design but i also like the letters so i'm going to use some of the letters to try and spell out a name i did think a short name like joe or jen 
but I went with Jody because there's a Jody over who works at Tonic Studios <laughs> doing a bit of sucking up. No, I'm kidding. But it's a short name and um I went with a Y just in case that this didn't come out nice. <laughs> Because then I can say it's not like that Jodie's for another Jodie. <laughs> the Jodie in my family. <laughs> you could just use the sentiments like birthday wishes. But I just thought it would be nice to personalise it with the name. And I also did think of just using like a big, one of the big letters like a B or a J. But then once I had done it, the space just felt so empty. So unless you've got like a big alphabet die that will fill up that space, maybe use that. I was going to use a, like acrylic paint to paint, but then I thought, let me just use some of the supplies that a tonic lover might already have. So that besides the gesso and a sealer, you don't have to buy much really. So this is fresh copper and soft truffle embellishment mousses and we're going to paint with them like you would with acrylic paint so they're going to be a substitute for acrylic paint i might, might mix them with some white acrylic paint or some of the gesso it depends which one gives me the color that i need because this one is a bit red and i might need to like um tone it down a bit so i'm going for like earthy tones because of autumn but not too earthy i also want some black splatters and i had used a uh, the sparkle spray for the first one that I did here and it worked out just fine so you can use your I think that's morning for morning fog or something like that or you can use your meteorite shower uh, shimmer powder because what you want is a shimmer it's a bit of a shimmer because uh, trust me it's worth the trouble just a bit of that shimmer and sparkle is really worth the trouble so either use your sparkle spray or your shimmer powder or I can't think of anything else that's glittery. Maybe your glitter pens. You could just use your glitter pens, mix it with water, get it to a sort of watery consistency, then do your splatters. So to color my letters, I was thinking of using the shimmer spray mixed with some gesso. But if that doesn't work, I might try this days on refill. So it's a refill inker. It's a re-inker for stays on ink. Or I might use my Micron pen because it's got archival ink, which is water waterproof and um, permanent. I assume it's permanent because it is quite permanent on my cards. But if all that doesn't work, I'll use my shimmer spray. What I do is I use this, sorry, uh, sparkle spray, not shimmer spray. Gosh, I can't speak. Sparkle spray. I'll use my sparkle spray. So you spray it and then you cover it with uh, some spray either a sealer but i don't know if a sealer would be right before you paint everything else on so what i do is i spray it with some hairspray just so that those uh splatters that i've done don't move around so let's just get started so that you can see what i mean so i had already filmed this bit i had done the splatters and sprayed them with hairspray and then i realized my camera wasn't recording it had stopped recording which is always fun i hate this camera so anyway i'm going to do it again i just wiped it off which is the good thing about acrylic paint once you have your primer on sorry about gesso once you have your primer on if you make a mistake just wipe it off so i just wiped it off but then there is still some stains so i'm just going in and adding another layer of gesso gesso is so light so it really isn't such a big deal having to add so many layers sorry you can see the side of my cheeks there because i have to be like quite close to see what i'm doing but that's all that you're doing you're just adding a light layer you just use your paintbrush I think I got this as a set from the craft stash. I will link it below. But I don't think you need a specific kind of uh, paintbrush. I think any paintbrush will work anyway. But I will link it in the description just in case you want to use this particular one. So I am just, I think this one is called a flat brush. I'm not about to act like I know about anything to do with paintbrushes. I just do what looks right, guys. <laughs> 
one. I'm not really one for like techniques and tools and all these things. I just do what looks right. So I'm just going to paint in opposite directions until I have a light layer. Then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and take a wet wipe and just try and clean up the edges because you do get some of it stuck on the edges. So what I do is I use my finger because it can it allows me to keep that rounded shape so i use my finger and then i wipe it on the wet wipe like that i did try using my wet wipe earlier but that was complicated because as you can see there you like really get too close to the edge and you might wipe off some of the paint off that edge whereas your finger gives you more control and you don't wipe off bits that you don't want to wipe off so just cleaning up all those corners and then once that's done i'm going going to leave that to air dry you can dry it with your heating tool but just leave it to air dry i think that's best after about 30 minutes your primer should be all dry and it should be ready to be painted or sparkleized <laughs> with some sparkle spray and uh, my brush was already in water because i had filmed this before like i mentioned but all you need is a fan brush and then a pump of that sparkle spray pump it louder okay no i'm not gonna sing <laughs> so you can just see all that beautiful mica in that sparkle spray and i'm just adding some white gesso to it because i don't want it to be a pure black more like a grayish black uh for personal reasons <laughs> i just don't like the black black i thought the grayish black would look really nice but then I could have been wrong because I think I did go ahead and add a layer of black after that. But anyway, I wanted to show you this bit that once you've done your sparkle spray splatter, some of the splatters will go over the edge. So you just grab your wipe again and just wipe off any bits off the edge. And if there are any bits that you don't like, you can go ahead, take your paintbrush, wet it, and then just pick it up using your wet wipe. I'm making a mess of this but it shouldn't be that complicated because that's the best part about using a uh, gesso you can just wipe it off if you're not happy with any of it as you can see there I just wiped it off and I'm going to leave that to dry but before I let it dry I did add a few more splatters because I just saw way too much white space and white space makes me panic I'm like oh my gosh no what am I gonna put there <laughs> so I just ended up adding more splatters to it okay so I went ahead and sprayed my uh, coaster with hairspray and that stops the ink the sparkle spray sorry from smudging it seals it in place so go ahead and do that it does make it a bit sticky but it's not the worst thing to live with so anyway grab your stencil once the hairspray is dry obviously it shouldn't take too long anyway to dry and then now you're just going to position it so that we can do the name we're going to do the name first so i'm going to use that big j for uh our jody and i'm just positioning it in a place where i like so you just figure out where you where you like where you'd like your name to be oh my gosh why is english so hard <laughs> anyway i'm taking my pencil and i'm just tracing the outside of that die shape i hope that makes sense i'm tracing the outside line and the inside so it's going to give you like a I don't know how to explain this so I really hope you can see what I'm doing I'm tracing the outside and then the inside as well and that will give you the shape of the die cut J oh dear <laughs> I'm not usually like short for words but I'm actually like finding it really hard to explain this but anyway, I'm grabbing a darker pencil because the one I was using was way too light. So I'm just grabbing a darker pencil so that I can really see my outline. But what it basically leaves you is a shape that you can then now fill in with some uh, ink paint or whatever you choose to use. So just do that bit really carefully. Once you're done with your J, just move on to your other letters, your O, 
your D and your Y until your name is spelled out, just tracing out the letters the same way. Okay, so if you're like me and you're a complete clots, I know you did make mistakes, but don't worry. All you need to do is just grab your eraser and erase off any bits that you don't want there. And when that's done, we're going to grab our micron pen. I think that was a 10, a 10 pen mark. I don't know what those numbers mean, but anyway, I'm grabbing a 10 micron pen and then I'm just going over the edges and filling in the, with the, what am I doing? Filling in the shape. Yeah. With the archival ink. <laughs> Guys, you know what? These days are too long. Like all the things get jumbled up in our heads, don't they? Anyway this was not working i am telling you i was trying because i thought this would definitely work i thought this would be the easiest method but oh my goodness it was not working the color was just not applying and it wasn't giving me a clean line as i anticipated it was just getting splodgy i know you can't see on the camera but trust me in real life it was just not working well, my crumb pen obviously kept getting clogged because i don't know what it is about uh my crumb pens but they do not like working over other surfaces i don't know if it's just acrylic surfaces or just all painty surfaces in general but anyway, after the O, I decided to grab my alcohol marker and this worked way, way better. It was just smoother to apply and it was getting on a really darker layer of that color. So after I had done the D, I also decided to go over the other letters that I had done previously with the archival ink. And I just went over that. That's my nouveau marker i think it's just called black <laughs> pitch black that's why it's called pitch black it's called pitch black so i use my pitch black nuva marker and i just went over that letter and tried to give it more color and just clean up the lines a bit because the alcohol marker was working better but i think probably a permanent marker would work better i don't know if alcohol markers are just like permanent markers are they I don't know let me know in the comments by the way if you've watched this far and you haven't subscribed that is just disrespectful <laughs> okay no i'm kidding but please subscribe okay because you know how youtube works okay the algorithm needs subscribers it also needs likes and comments so please do all of those things i really really do appreciate it okay so after i'd added that first layer of um my alcohol marker i did go ahead and um whoop, that was a wobbly woo and i'm just trying to correct some of the mistakes that i made there i first i tried a white gel pen it took away some of the oopsies but it didn't give me a completely clean look so what i ended up doing is just grabbing my paint brush guys you know like i say i am not a professional i just try things that i wouldn't say i'm like a professional no i'm just i would say i'm experimental i'm more experimental i just try things out and sometimes things work and sometimes they don't for instance going over those mistakes with gesso worked a treat it's like basically nothing was ever there so i just took a detailing brush a really small brush and i just went over some of those mistakes with my leftover gesso and i got a bit too enthusiastic and ended up doing too much like i always do but it's all right i can fix that up once the gesso is dry so the gesso dried up pretty quickly and i was able to now go over that name that i had used uh, my archival ink on which didn't work and then i used uh, my alcohol marker and that worked better but it still wasn't the greatest so i'm going in with some sparkle spray i should have just used this from the beginning so when you're doing yours don't torture yourself okay i've done the torture so that you don't have to just grab your sparkle spray and a really tiny detailing brush and just use that to paint that um name on just use your sparkle spray okay i put these things in here so that you know what not to do 
So now that we know what not to do, we can now move on to the next bit. I decided to use the flower from the Just For You dye. So I'm just firstly cutting out that flower and then I'm just going to trace over it. I started with one flower because I didn't have a particular design in my head. So I just wanted to see what that one flower would look like. So I'm just tracing the outline because I did trace a bit of the internal line and then I just thought no that didn't look right so I'm just tracing the outline just to get the shape of the flower and then we're going to paint that in and see how it goes from there. I really like the fresh copper colour but I feel like it was way too red so I tried mixing it with some water and then some white gesso and then that made it too pale so I'm now adding some of the soft truffle embellishment mousse just to try and get back a bit of that colour and then I'm adding in more of that fresh copper. I'm just trying to mix a colour that I like and once I get that colour which is this colour here you can use whatever colour you prefer I just wanted like an earthy brown but not too earthy like a coppery brown if that makes sense that colour that I got there I thought that's what I wanted so that's what I went with it's like um, a deep sand brown is there anything called dip sand? Okay, I'm not going to act like I know what I'm talking about. I just wanted a brown that wasn't too red. Yeah, that's it. So painting with embellishment mousse was not the easiest job. Honestly, it was not. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, It was enjoyable, but it just wasn't easy, okay? So what you do is uh, you add on, because it doesn't give you a smooth layer like how acrylic paint would so what you do is you add a light layer of that and then you grab another paint brush and wet it and then dip it lightly into your embellishment mousse and then try and paint with that so basically use a wetter paint brush but not too wet because you don't want a splodgy mess i hope i'm explaining it well but then if you've got your own method of using embellishment mousse to paint then just use that so after I'd added on a thick enough layer of the embellishment mousse, I then used a clean brush to just take away some of that paint, uh, some of the embellishment mousse paint, just to give that design to the flower that's almost like the original design of the die cut shape. And I removed some of the colour from the leaves just to give some highlights. Then I went and added some brown splatter. I left all that to dry and honestly I could have just left it here, it looked pretty fine but you know what I said earlier about white space, it just makes me panic and I was like let me just add a bit more to it and I just kept adding more so what I did is I grabbed that bottom flower shape that comes as its own separate piece and then I used it as a stencil i just used my black sparkle spray my all black not the one that i'd mixed with the gray this is just pure sparkle spray from the uh from the can not the can anyway from the container <laughs> that's what i mean from the container and i'm just using my detailing brush to just fill in all those little bits there with the sparkle spray and I'm going so slow but I had to fast forward this otherwise this video is going to be like hours long because of how slow I was going I was so scared to ruin it and I ended up ruining it but then I fixed it again so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so once I had filled in the interior shape I'm now using my detailing brush just to give it an outline and you can see how frustrated i am i am like shaking my camera i'm just frustrated at this point i'm not going to lie but you don't have to make those mistakes i made them so that you don't have to make them so anyway i like the top bit of that i'm not going to lie i really love that big flower so i'm trying to make this little flower to look like that big flower but then at some point I do realize, okay, it's a bit pointless. So I just grab my wipe and I just wipe the bit that I don't like. I just wipe it all off because that is the beauty of using gesso. You can just start again. So I use that same 
big flower shape to then come in and re-stencil over that and I'm telling you I loved this so so much better. Sorry about my hair popping in there so now I'm just adding an outline to that internal stencil and then I'm grabbing that flower dye that I used to make that brown flower and I'm going to add it over here at the base just to tie it in a bit more. I still feel like the design is still a bit empty so I'm just adding in flowers the same way he's still using sparkle spray from the container and i'll just go in and give it an in um, internal shape and then add an outline and now i'm just adding some flourishes using the tip of my detailing brush there just to give it a bit more of a room i don't know in my head that's what i think i'm doing <laughs> and then i'm also gonna go ahead and add some black to that brown because i felt like it looked a bit untidy and i thought the black would tidy it up and i think i was kind of right for this flower to add the black because the brown was looking really messy like child's play <laughs> no one wants to call their work child's play but you know it is what it is if that's what it looked like so i added the black there and then i added a few more little flowers just a few flourishes here and there guys i couldn't put the paintbrush down okay i just kept adding more stenciled flowers onto it and then this is the final design so it's still wet at this point because i've just freshly painted it so i'm going to leave it to dry then once it's dry i'm going to paint on three layers i think i'm gonna go with three just to be sure three is safe i'm gonna paint on three layers of mod podge and then i will show you the final product which is what you saw at the beginning of the video but i'll show you again so that's the final design it's now safe to use because it's been coated with three layers of mod podge and i like the texture that the mod podge has given it because it now really gives off that sort of ceramic vibe so i really love it and i also like that if it catches the right light you can still see some of the mica from the sparkle spray and it shimmers slightly so that's really awesome and then also you can see some of the brown coming out of the letters i don't even know why because i didn't add any brown but that's what's happened so guys if you like this video please make sure you press that like button subscribe and comment also please check out my other videos which are linked right here and also my website and my instagram which are linked in the description below thank you guys